Welcome back. We are Gentlemen United, and you are in the Man Cave. Anthony Sherwood, award-winning actor and filmmaker, including awards like the Martin Luther King Award, wrote, directed, and produced Honor Before Glory, winning the Gemini Award and a Hollywood Black Film Festival Award in Los Angeles. It's the story of Canada's one and only all-black military battalion that was formed during World War I. Joining me tonight from Toronto, Canada is Anthony Sherwood, and of course you, our viewers. I'm Sean Best. Hey, Tony, how you doing? Hey, Sean Best, how you doing? <laughs> not bad, not bad. Tell us a bit about your career in the arts. What drew you to acting? Oh my gosh. Uh, I come from a family, uh, a musical family. Uh, so uh, music and the arts and entertainment has always been a part of my uh, own family. And um, uh, I started off as a nightclub singer, actually, uh, playing in a band. And uh, found that to be very difficult uh, schlepping equipment around the country, around the city, and I wanted, and depending upon seven other guys for your livelihood. So I wanted to do something else, uh, and I decided to try acting. And I found out that I had a, a, a passion for it, and because I was used to performing on stage as a singer, uh, for me it was a natural transition to go from a musical entertainer into uh, acting. And I started off in musical theater, uh, doing plays like Ain't Misbehaving, Cabaret, and uh, plays like that. Then I moved from stage eventually into film. And um, after being an actor, uh, my gosh, for about uh, 25 years, I noticed that as an actor, uh, I enjoyed my career, but I, I, uh, I realized there were uh, a lot of films that I was acting in that really didn't touch upon subjects uh, that I was passionate about. And there were, I noticed there was a, a, a lack of films being done on African-Canadian history and culture. And that sort of made me uh, want to uh, go into filmmaking and produce films uh, of my own. And uh, uh, it's a lot more difficult because as you know, film is a very expensive medium in which to tell stories. In fact, it's the most expensive medium in which to tell stories. And uh, uh, but I, I was determined uh, because I, I felt that uh, uh, it was important to pursue that passion and it was important to tell stories that I thought people would be interested in and stories that would fascinate uh, an audience. So and before we get into that, because I do want to get into that, um, let's take a step back here so people really understand uh, some of the work that you've already done. So. What are some of the more notable productions that you've performed in? And you've talked a bit about some of the stage productions that you've done in the nightclub acts, but um, uh, movies, TV, uh, can you talk about some of the work that you've done there? Sure. Um, after uh, doing uh, a lot of stage and a lot of small roles in films, uh, I guess my biggest break came in uh, 1986 uh, when I uh, got uh, uh, casted and starred in the American television uh, series, Airwolf 2. And uh, uh, that was a big break for me because uh, Airwolf had already been on the air uh, on CBS for a number of years. Uh, at that particular time, uh, Airwolf was the most expensive television show on television. It was a, a million dollars an episode. But anyway, uh, C CBS uh, uh, decided to cancel the uh, the series, and it was picked up with, on another network, Universal Television, and they, they, it was called Airwolf 2, and uh, with a whole new cast. And I was very fortunate to be casted as, as one of the stars in that series. Then in the late 80s, I got cast in a, a Canadian television series, uh, an award-winning television series called Street Legal, where I played a crown attorney. Uh, uh, in, uh, in American terms, that would be a district attorney. I was the love interest of the uh, female star of this series. Uh, it was the uh, first uh, interracial relationship in a prime time ongoing dramatic series in North America. Uh, it was the first. Uh, there had already been uh, interracial relationships on uh, soap operas during the day. Uh, there were interracial relationships on half hour comedy situations. Like the one I, uh, that stands out the most for me is the Jeffersons, their neighbors upstairs, was an, they had an interracial relationship. But 
the, the, my role in street legal was the first interracial relationship on prime time and in a dramatic prime time series. So I was on for five of those eight years. And um, uh, yeah, that, uh, that really laid the groundwork for, for me to get into other uh, films, uh, major films. Uh, had the opportunity to perform with uh, so many great actors, um, uh, Henry Fonda, Sidney Poitier, Jamie Lee Curtis, uh, Jessica Alba, Lou Gossett Jr. Uh, yeah, so um, I, I consider myself extremely blessed uh, to be able to, uh, to have attained a, a good body of work uh, in my career. You've worked in some very uh, high profile stuff with some very high profile people like yourself. Um, all right, so now my question is, why did you decide to write, produce, and direct a documentary on Canada's one and only all-black military battalion? What story were you trying to tell, and who is the audience that you're trying to reach? Uh, at that time, uh, I had uh, produced a documentary film. It was a musical documentary at that particular time. Uh, uh, and uh, the, the musical documentary that I produced before this film was called Music of Family Tradition, and it looked at four African Canadian families that had music as part of their uh, uh, family tradition, and it uh, <clears throat> it won a Gemini, which is sort of a equivalent to uh, American Emmy Award, and the film was broadcast on PBS and uh, was nominated for an International Emmy Award. Um, so I had that under my belt, so that sort of gave me confidence to do more films, produce more films. But the story of the All Black Battalion, uh, that story actually came to me. I didn't go looking for that uh, story. Uh, my cousin um, gave me a diary of his father, and his father was William Andrew White, who happened to be the chaplain of that All Black Battalion. And he uh, gave me the diary. Uh, I read the diary. And the diary was uh, an account of my great uncle's experience while serving in France with this all black battalion. Um, when I read the diary, it just blew me away because I had no idea what these black soldiers were experiencing and uh, uh, what the kind of uh, racism and discrimination they were subjected to. And after I read the diary, I asked my cousin, I said, well, did your father ever uh, write any other diaries in his life? And he said, no, this is the only diary he ever wrote in his life. And that struck me. I said, why did he take the time to write a diary at this time in his life? And uh, I got the feeling that he kept this diary because he wanted people to know the story. And so after I read the diary, I said, gee, it's kind of uh, coincidental that this diary would land in the hands of a filmmaker. And uh, I honestly felt that my great uncle, William White, wanted somebody to tell his story. And so that's what, that was the motivation for me to produce this film was that diary because the diary was, it was the only handwritten account of what happened to those black soldiers when they were overseas serving in France. Uh, sure, there are uh, military records of all the soldiers, but in those military records, they're not gonna say how these soldiers were the last ones to get underwear and socks, that they were worked in the rain and snow until they got sick, and that the, do the white doctors refused to take care of them. That's not in any military records. And so uh, the diary was, was the motivation for me to, to produce this film. So to your, to your point, those subtle nuances, the, the minor things that would, that would happen, there's no way that you could actually get that information unless you were to read it from a first account, right? So I imagine that although that was very helpful when you had to write the, um, the screenplay, at the same time, um, you had to decide, okay, when, I, I can't tell the entire story in the course of a documentary, so there's certain things I'm going to have to cut out, and certain other things I'm going to have to embellish on to build it out and then build the characters around it and so on. So what was that process like? 
it's a very difficult process because any filmmaker who's uh, uh, adapting a screenplay from a book or some other source, uh, you have to understand that when you're writing a book, there's no uh, limit or time frame on the terms of how long that story is going to be. But when you're telling a story on film, you're restricted to a time element. You know, you've got to be in a feature film, you've got to be able to tell a story within two hours. Translating that screenplay from a book, or in this case, a diary, which happened over two years, 1917 and 1918, where he, my great uncle recorded something in the diary every single day in those two years, you had to condense and you had to pick out the, the highlights and the most, what I felt were the most important things that happened and the most dramatic things that happened uh, to those soldiers and to my great uncle. And so it's a, it's a long process of, of figuring out which ones to, to pull out and which ones to highlight. But I, I think that I did a good job in terms of, of, uh, of selecting the scenes and the dramatic moments in those, in those black soldiers' lives that, uh, that were important and that no very few people uh, on this earth realized what had happened. And first of all, not too many Canadians, not too many Americans realize that there was an all-black battalion in the First World War. A lot of Canadians don't realize that black men, they, 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 they served, fought, bled, and died during the First World War for their country. And so this was extremely important for me, first of all, to let people uh, learn and discover that uh, African Canadians, people of African descent, served their country during the First World War. And that there was an all-black battalion uh, that was created in four. If you enjoyed the show and want to see more, join our Facebook page called Man Cave by General United. All of our shows have tons of additional content and invitations to future shows are posted there. You can add to the conversation and suggest future discussion topics. Please like, comment, share, and most of all, subscribe by clicking the General United icon. I promise it's free. Thanks again for joining us in the Man Cave. Enjoyed the show? Like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for joining us in the man cave.